Consider mine affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget thy law. Plead my cause and deliver me. Quicken me according to thy word. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statutes. Great are thy tender mercies, O Lord. Quicken me according to thy judgment. Many are my persecutors and my enemies, yet do I not decline from thy testimony. I beheld the transgressions that was grieved, beheld the transgressors, and was grieved because they kept not thy word. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Amen. Forever. Okay, in uh, 155 it says, Salvation is far away from the wicked. Now, if I'd ask you who the wicked are, we'd say, like, Charles Manson, Adolf Hitler, you know, all these people. But according to the Word of God, the people that don't walk according to the Word of God, God sees them as wicked. So if we rebel against the Word in any way, then God sees us as wicked. And it says that the wicked will miss God's salvation. The word of salvation in Hebrew is Yeshua. So... If we miss, uh, if, we're, if we're wicked, then we're going to miss Yeshua. We don't want to miss Yeshua because they don't. Because the wicked don't know what's important. Everybody's got priorities in life. They feel what you know. This is important to me. But according to the, this, nothing is more important than 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 the Word of God. Amen. The the sum of it all is the Word brings life, life to us. And I was sharing earlier. In the ancient Hebrew, the word life, that, because remember, we think of things in, in the Western mind, you know, because we've been brought up in, in this culture. And so if I said, what is life, we would all have our opinions of life. But the ancient Hebrews, when they wrote this, when they would say they had life, it just meant that they had a full book. So that was their, their definition of life. So, praise God. Any questions, comments? If not, we're going to just go right into uh, Brother Theo. Thank you, Theo, for coming. Let's give him a hand as he comes forward. Thank you for having me. Amen. That was a weekend. Okay. Uh, to Yah be the glory. Thank you all for having me Hallelujah. again. Uh, so what, what we want to do is continue a bit from uh, last time, but I want to do things a little bit more uh, time conscious and efficient if possible. Again, the goal is that you will leave here changed. But I don't want to do like uh, last time and leave uh, kind of a cliffhanger vibe in the room. So what I want to do is cut it short after, say, maybe around 10 minutes to and uh, allow for questions. So I'm going to break this up as best I can into two parts, uh, approximately 20 minutes each. Well, it's going to be less than that. But the first part, I'm going to, I'm going to just go through some things. Can I interrupt one real quick? Sure. And if you can't get it done, we can do part three. Okay. I mean, it's just, you know, we'd love to have you come back and finish. We don't want to rush, and we want to you know, make sure we, we get everything God's got for us. Amen. Okay. All right. Okay, so y'all yeah, guide my tongue, guide my mind, Amen. guide my heart to be aligned with your will, guide my hands. Okay, Amen. so first we're going to go through some more examples of spelling um, for the benefit of any who may need a reminder or who weren't here for the first thing. Uh, we, we were talking about the fact that the art or the study of putting together letters to create words is called spelling. And we were relating that to the fact that there is an agenda. The scripture tells us that the devil is the prince of this world. 
So, uh, and also we're told that the serpent was more cunning than any of the beasts of the field. Seek and ye shall find. Jesus said, watch and pray. So therefore, one thing that the believers are not doing that unfortunately some non-believers um, are doing a lot of, especially on YouTube, is they are watching and questioning the world around them, even the subtle things. What a lot of times you find among believers is this sort of mentality here. Well, I don't drink and I don't smoke and I don't curse, so I'm good. Well, if that was the only doorway into the devil's domain, then you would be good. But we're talking about a very clever adversary who has been around for long, long years, like the Stone said. And uh, he plays chess, not checkers. And his strength is in hiding himself. You've heard it said in many movies. Um, one example was in The Devil's Advocate. You've also heard it said in the movie um, The Usual Suspects, the line, the greatest trick that the devil ever pulled was to make man believe that he does not exist. Mm -hmm. So what he does is he hides himself in the things around you in an obvious sort of fashion if we just take a little time to look at the things around us. But we're made to be so busy that we ignore the evidence of the enemy in the things all around us. So what we want to do is look at some words real quick, uh, even look at some things in pop culture, and just begin to have an eye for spotting the enemy. So this is, in essence, a know thy enemy lesson. Okay, If we are all fighting the good fight, if we wrestle not against flesh and blood, then then we need to understand the enemy that we do wrestle against and that we do fight against. There is a fight. There is a battle. How can you wage proper warfare without good counsel, according to the word? So this is part of our, as a, the body, the army of God, understanding the strategies of the enemy in everyday things around us. The thing that we all use each and every day and that we use rather callously in general is the words that we speak, the conversation that we have one to another. Mm -hmm. Proverbs, or proverbs, positive words, tells us uh, uh, several times in several scriptures, and we named quite a few last time, that the power of, of, of uh, life and death is in the tongue, uh, and uh, um, uh, speak life. Uh, the, the tongue is like the rudder, a tiny rudder of, of a mighty ship and uh, other examples all throughout scripture. Um, speak those things that are not as though they were. But one of the most important examples, well, two very important examples you find in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, where the very beginning of creation was brought into existence. The, the, the very light that we see was brought into existence by the word, spoken by the true and living. The I am eternal. Then also we find in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1, the very beginning. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And in that particular um, portion of the Gospel, when you find the Greek that, it, that the English was translated from, you find the word for word being logos. which is where you get the name of what company symbols are called, is logo. A symbol is a word. When you see the Nike symbol, it's as good as the word Nike. When you see um, a particular symbol, it tells you, uh, what, what the, the uh, expression is a picture is worth a thousand words. But interesting en enough, as General John showed and proved last week, and as I know a lot of us know who've been studying the ancient Hebrew, all our letters, well, all the original letters, but there are some <coughs> false letters sitting in there, but all of our letters were originally pictures. So let's look at a couple of examples of that, and then uh, we're going to break down a few words and look at what they really equate to. Words are equations. Because not only were they pictures, but in the ancient languages, they were numbers. So 
Every word adds up to something. The pictures add up to more than what the definitionary, uh, excuse me, what the dictionary tells us that they do. Now, in the practices of the occult, uh, in certain magic practices, there is a phenomenon called magic words. The same people who devise the system of spelling that they teach to young children to allow them to communicate one to another, inserted certain magic words and cursed words in our language that aren't four and five letter words. There are a great deal of words that we use every day that are in essence used to curse and confuse us as to how we're communicating one to another. It's important that the devil confuse our ability to communicate properly. People who come from other nations, when they learn English, they say, it's one of the hardest languages for them to learn, you know, especially bilingual people. Why is that? We're talking about uh, compared to uh, Chinese writing, which is picture writing, co compared to uh, Spanish, French, all other languages. There's something about the English language that makes it harder to learn. It's because, and I, I maintain this, and we did a little looking into this last week, it's because of Noah Webster and Daniel Webster's connection to the secret societies. The secret societies are rent there. The secret is that they worship Lucifer. That's the secret. Secret societies set up all things that govern the things of the world. All things. People, a million questions run through people's minds. That's sports, that's entertainment, that's the financial world, that's the world of music, everything of the world is run by secret societies. How can I prove this? Name something that you can be a success in and not be a part of some fraternal group, some, some group. It's, it, everyone uh, has heard the expression, it's not what you know, but it's who you know. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about going all the way back to when spelling was first devised, uh, devised and designed, excuse me, <clears throat> and the Board of Education, which helps perpetuate certain things that the secret society wants taught. But what Lucifer wants taught by way of his secret society. And there are a great many. There are secret societies for children. There are secret societies for teens. There are secret societies for adults. Now, as we uh, spoke last time of the Boy Scouts and the Girl Scouts, let's make this clear too. And even of Masons. This is even true of Masons. You have those who are complicit and understand the deeper levels of what they're a part of, and you have those who do not. The same way you have Christians who are very into their word and they understand the nuances and the mysteries of the Bible, and then you have Christians who just, you know, know the basics. Well, even deeper, when we're talking about secret societies, we're talking about an organization that allows one to move up the ranks by degrees. And the key degree, and we're going to get to this, this is going to be the fun part, but this is just a little foundation. I'm going to be time conscious. The key degree is 32 and 33. Most of us who have a relative who, who uh, has, has uh, been a part of the Masons, the Elks, the Shriners, most of them never got past the 32 degree, the 32nd degree, okay? They remained frozen. There are, there, there are many words and expressions that we use that came from the Masonic influence on our society through sports, through entertainment, through media. We say a lot of things that secret societies have taught us to say unbeknownst to us. One of those things is watch your back. Another one of those things is well-rounded. Stand on your square stand on my square. There is a way that they, they will stand to notify one to another that I'm, I'm a member without verbal communication. A lot of nonverbal communication goes back to these same secret societies. The 32 degree person would know this, but only the 33rd degree and higher know that we worship Lucifer. Now, once you receive the fire 
or the light of Lucifer. And that's the word that they like to refer to Halal or Shaitan as because it comes from the Latin loose cipher, or which which is, you know, that's one way of saying it, but Lucy Fur. That's another way that they'll tell you. They, you know, they try to confuse things, but the Lu cipher, a cipher is a circle, so it's a circle of those who believe in Lu, short for Lucifer, or it's the Lucy Fair. Lucy, where you get Lucient or Illusion, illusion. Lucy meaning light and fair, where you get the word fairy to carry from. So he's called the light bearer. Lucifer would mean the light bearer. Fairy to carry? Yes, fairy. Like to fairy. Could you ferry me over there to the right hand so I can get a well, packet? Marcus. <laughs> but, but you know what though? We're going to find that words that sound the same but are spelled a little differently are generally the same words. Okay? But but there but there is some reason that they want to disassociate your ability to relate those two words, okay? So very good, Joe, excellent, excellent point. So yes, so the 33rd degree is where you receive the light or the flame, a match, some people know, a wooden match that you strike is also called a Lucifer, absolutely. So once you receive the flame, <coughs> Once they come to you and they say, well, you've been a good and dedicated member, you have something to offer our organization, and we want to take you higher. Really, it's that you have something if they want. Okay, they will tap you for the 33rd degree. I had a friend of mine who, I was teaching this in 2002 or one, and he came to one of my meetings and he decided, he said, wow, man, and he pulled me to the side afterward. This was a good friend of mine. We double dated to the prime in high school, my, my dog, as they say. And he, he came to me and he said, wow, man, you know, if it's really like that, I should belong. This is how you really get ahead in life. I said, man, I said, you know, you, you, you know, brother, you know, you really don't know what you're getting into. You don't want to do that. He said, oh, oh man, I, you know, my stepfather, he's the one, he can bring me in. People get brought in generationally. It's a way to pass a generational curse down. So I gave him a stack of information <coughs> thicker than all of this put together. Some, some things I really wanted to pass out at the meetings the next week. But I gave them to him because this was my good friend. And I said, man, you need to read up on it. Well, make a long story short, he took that stuff home and he used it to his advantage and he joined. And he came back to me maybe a few months later and told me he had joined and said, man, you know, a lot of things you said, man, it was right. You know, and I asked my worshipful master, the guy that runs the lodge is called the worshipful master. And I asked my worshipful master this, that, and the third, and, you know, he was right about a lot of that stuff he was saying, man, but he didn't know about this. He didn't know, you know, he wouldn't tell him about this, and he wouldn't tell him about that. Later on, maybe some months after that, we met up at a, um, after a mutual friend's father's funeral, we met up again and we, we were having dinner out, a bunch of us, and he came and I came before everybody else got there. So I had a chance to sit across the table from him, hadn't talked to him in months. I saw how clean and shaven he was looking, he was sugar sharp. And, uh, you know, I said, so, I said, uh, you know, what's been going on? He said, oh, oh, man, you know, everything's great. I've been moving up the ranks. I said, oh, yeah. I said, what degree are you now? He said, oh, I'm a master mason. I'm 32 degrees. I knew that wasn't really about nothing. I said, you don't even know the secret. So I said, why aren't you 33? He said, oh, well, they come and tap you for that. So again, they, they decide who they're going to bring into this level of understanding, the 33rd degree. This is where they tell you what's really going on. Okay, so let's, let's jump. There's a lot of information about that. Okay, so I just wanted to give a little basis on that, but we're going to jump and we're going to move forward. Okay? Lots of information about that. Oh, and just to touch on, on the sports, because I believe I did mention it last time, yes, that's a direct relationship between the contrived battle between the Celtics of Boston and the Lakers of L.A. from back in the 80s, where you had number 32, 
Magic Johnson, and Larry Bird. Now many of the entertainers and athletes that we see today, the names that they're using in front of you and I, not the names they was born with. A great deal. A lot of people know this about rock and roll stars, but it's athletes, politicians as well. Why? Because oftentimes in their name will be some example or proof that they're part of the brotherhood. Okay? And I don't, they, we'll, we'll also hopefully get, get to that there's no coincidence. Coincidence is a contrived word. But that Magic Johnson was his name and he ended up really being more famous for catching a sexual disease than even from winning championships. And his name was Magic Johnson. And then Larry Bird, uh, he was the, the great white hope of the NBA, where a big part of the devil's plan is to use the secret societies to create diversions, diversionary tactics to divide and conquer. The young from the old, the black from the white, the uh, upper class from the lower class. So part of the divide and conquer dynamic is to create racism. Racism was created also by these same secret societies. The Ku Klux Klan was created, founded by, in reality, though now, you know, when, when this first came out, it was easy to find. Some things, as people begin to sniff them out, they will make some changes and just some facts. That's why all your facts can never come strictly from books. You have to be able to discern it because we're talking chess, not checkers. But Albert Pike was the man who came up with the Ku Klux Klan, okay? And uh, not only uh, do you find it on the white side of prejudice and racism, but you find it on the black side as well. I mean. Every time something happens, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty black, I never <laughs> elected Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton to talk for me. Amen. But every time <laughs> something happens in the black community, these are the people who come out and get the official podium and get to say, well, we black people believe blah, 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 blah. I'm from Detroit. I, you know, if I don't get a vote, I don't know who, who should. <laughs> but, but that's part of keeping, and, and the Trayvon Martin incident was, all, was also, it was contrived. It was part of keeping a racial issue going that's a big distraction from the fact that the real enemy and you know, these, these suckers are victims. Most people that, that come into the lodge, they don't come in with a knowledge, well, it used to be that way, today, today is something different. But it used to be that our grandparents and uncles, they just was trying to get ahead in life. They had no idea they would end up in Lucifer worship. Go ahead. Today, it's different. Because you have um, a lot of information available in the information age that was not out there when grandpa and, and uncle and, and, and auntie, as far as the Eastern Star goes, was trying to get ahead in life. It's different today. Nowadays, it's very few who would go in and not have the opportunity of knowing what the secret is. What's the big secret of the secret society? Okay? So, that being said, let's, let's, let's jump ahead. Let's look at some words. It's fun to look at the words. I love to look at the words. Logos. Okay. Let me just move the Rosh to there for a second. Okay. Praise Yah. All right. Now, we know that the English language is supposed to be a, an, an amalgamation, of a, 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 a language created from other languages. Some people would, would say it's a bastard language, meaning it has no father. It does have a father, Father Lucifer, according to them. The English language, is that what you said? Absolutely. Uh, many of the words you will find have an origin in another language. One of the most common languages that they tell us they tell us is a dead language that English is based off of is Latin. However, when you look at the Harry Potter film, someone had such a great grasp of Latin that all of the spells that the kids are saying are are really done in Latin, which is supposed to be a dead language. Okay, but it's only dead to the masses. To those that still conjure and 
views of the science of demonology or witchcraft, Latin is very much alive. And to those in the legal system, strangely mm -hmm. enough, mm -hmm. where you have liars, liars, <laughs> yep. who are masters at the language, just as Noah Webster was in the, the devil and Noah Webster story, excuse me, the devil and Daniel Webster story, Daniel Webster was a master orator and liar, liar. Now, you'll find that, again, words that sound alike, we can play with the letters and I can prove that they're the same words. That's why you have so many unnecessary letters also in English spelling. And what makes a lot of children very um, uh, adverse to learning this language is because it doesn't follow simple, normal, logical rules. Now, let's look at a couple of things here. Per capita, capita capital, the head, per head, you know that? Per hour, you know, you're going so many miles per hour, you get paid so much per hour. Well, let's look at you and I. They say we are per sun. a per sun. And the sun, is the Latin root where you get sonic. One of the uh, number one manufacturers of keyboards is a company called N Sonic. The son means sound. It's where you get the word sound. So a per son, in effect, you are a vibration. Amen. You are a sound. That's why when you walk into a, a room and a person has a bad vibration or bad vibes, mm -hmm. you feel it. They, they taught us in science class that the molecules that, you know, as we sit here, it appears that our, our bodies are relatively still until we move them. You cannot be still. You're constantly in motion. That's right. You're vibrating, and a vibration creates a sound. Sound is vibration. So you are a person. You are a sound. Mm. Okay, let's look at some more. Okay, uh, let's look at some more. Okay, music. Let's go with music. <coughs> I'm, I'm just going to go through the list here because I've got a lot, and I know we'll, we'll never get to all of this. Let's look at, let's, before we go to music, let's look at this. Uh, I was in the grocery store, and I was pointing out some things. Now, nowadays, there's a bunch of brands of bottled water. Mm -hmm. One of the first ones that was on the scene that was very popular, yeah, and remember, yeah. things that are popularized, things that are popularized are where you can find the Illuminati mark at most likely, okay? You and I, we can come, come together and we can make a little water company up, and it won't be distributed everywhere. We don't have that connection. But if you become a part of the Brotherhood, your water will be on the pages of the best magazines. It will be advertised a million times a day. Everyone will know about it. It will be supplied to more places. So your reach and your scope is widened by being a part of the Brotherhood. So when you see something that's super popular, that's the thing you want to look at more closely. Now, I thought it was interesting because I remember thinking it ludicrous that mankind would ever end up paying for water. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, not only are you paying for water, but you're trusting that the same general sources that are going to sell you water, who are really the same sources that jack the water up in the first place to where normal water is undrinkable or to where we have acid rain. So the same industrial sources in essence, that messed up the water are now going to create some nice, clean, fresh water for you to drink. And that would make you kind of naive. And it's just not a coincidence. Not a coincidence. Now, let's look at coincidence. 
what? It's a coincidence. Well, okay, I, I agree with you. It is a coincidence. The Bible says there is no such thing as coincidence. <laughs> Absolutely. But again, that's, a, that's an issue of diction yeah. from the dictionary. Because we say coincidence, we should say coincidence. If you said coincidence, which the dictionary teaches you to say coincidence, but if you said coincidence, then you'll look at, oh, well, you know, what a coincidence. You brought some chili in today, and I was just thinking about chili. That means there's a direct relationship between what you did and what I was thinking. And that's how the Lord speaks to us oftentimes, through things that we throw to the side. Instead, I'll say, oh, that's just a coincidence. He brought chili, and I was thinking about it. So therefore, I make no relationship between two things that the Most High may be using to teach me a lesson. Did, did everybody get that? Yes. yes. Okay. So let's look at, let's prove it. Don't show and tell, show and prove. All right. Amen. Interfere. Hmm, interesting. Interfere. Inter. Fear. <coughs> okay. Interfere, hence, hints to, hints to interfere. Inference. Hints to infer. Coincidence. Hints to coincide as opposed to it does not have anything to do with that. And you'll find that with all of your words that end in hence, it was in, there was, there's an old English term, hence. Means therefore to. So hence to interfere, therefore to interfere. Okay, let's look at some more. So, so there's some spiritual significance to why the words are messed with. Why people mess with these words. Uh, I thought it was interesting because even in things to do with finance, just real quick, Finance, you can deal with stocks and bonds. Ironically, those are two things used to imprison you and keep you in bondage. Go ahead. In old Whoa. English, right? Stocks and bonds. Yeah. yeah. It's coincidence. Yep. Coincidence. <laughs> Interference. <laughs> okay. Woo. Let's look at. Oh, and. By the way, all of your sports fans, you know, most sports are played with ball. Oh. Ball. Oh. Huh. And you may end the sport with a bell. Bell and ball, same demonic deity from the Old Testament. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let's move forward. We're going to go fast, but it's the lightning round. Okay. There'll be a quiz. <laughs> right. <laughs> there will be a quiz. Now, I alluded to these before, and I've got these on YouTube, so we're not going to spend much time on these. But you saw this when you were, when you was a kid. I saw this. It made no sense to me. I remember asking the grown-ups, how is this? How is this so? I wrote it down on a cardboard on the top of a, uh, of, of a shoe box, and I showed my granddad, I was like, Granddaddy, how is this so? He looked at me, boy, you're gonna ask too many questions here. <laughs> but, oh, I'm sorry. Very key words in the study of spirituality, very key. And ironically, you have one of the highest concepts you turn it backwards and you have one of the lowest to, to treat someone as a dog or to treat someone like a god. Someone wants you to believe that evil lives and that the devil lived. Again, we know these are words that are, we use these words 
exclusively in the English language for these terms. You know, in ancient times, there was sun worship mm -hmm. of the thing up high in the sky that's really a star. Star worship. Today, there's still star worship, worship of the stars. Mm -hmm. And this is where you get the mistaken Christianity of sun worship. Yahshua said time and time again, he made uh, no bones that he did not want to be worshipped. He gave all the worship to the Father. But that's that's part of the same dynamic. Why do we call the big star, the big helium uh, uh, ball in the sky, why do we call it the same thing you call your male child? Okay, these all these things are by design. Someone has designed these things to cause a confusion. Why do we worship on Sunday? Absolutely. That's right. You go and worship the sun on Sunday. Let's look at let's look at some music things. Let's start with the word itself. You want to know what a muse is? A uh, dog. Okay. Uh, well, uh, and, uh, um, amuse. Amuse me. Humor. A muse. A muse was a spirit that people uh, would believe would inspire them to paint or to write or to make. Uh, a joyful noise, what we call music today. And the, the fact that we're calling it music is a direct relation to the fact that the industry that produces it is demonic. It's sick. There's a sick spirit behind the joy, what was supposed to be the joyful noise only used to praise the Most High Creator. Mm -hmm. Any sound or, or any collaboration of instrumentation that's used to do Anything other than praise creation is used to praise destruction and by default becomes devil music. I wrote a song inadvertently, having no intention to write a, a, a song with double meaning to it, and it still fell in this same category because I wasn't writing a song to the Most High. There is a thing, that there's a double speak in music um, a great example of it is a song by Chris Brown called Fallen Angel, where if you're in the spell, you believe that he's singing about a girl who is a fallen angel. When you're out of the spell, you can hear clearly that he's not even talking about a girl. Okay, that's the basic of the songwriter secret. Many songs are like this, I would say 80 to 90 percent of love songs are songs dedicated to the spirit or the muse that inspires the artist. And that muse is either going to be the Holy Spirit or a demonic spirit. One or the other. Every time. Okay? You got the chords. Chords are used to bind you. Okay? You have uh, in, in the studio when you're turning the sound from the left speaker to the right speaker, it's called to pan it. Pan is another false deity who happens to be a flute playing yeah. mm -hmm. on top of the pan hands. flute. Right, absolutely, pan flute. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with pan pizza, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Keys. Of course, you play the keys, the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Key to what? To unlock certain gates. Uh, Pythagorean is known for creating uh, what they call the devil's chord, which in old English times was, and, and back in uh, medieval Europe, it was outlawed to put these chord combinations together because it was believed that if you struck this combination of keys, keys, you would open up the gateway, which is another name for the portal that you see people, you know, when you see people in witchcraft draw some symbol in the middle of a circle, they're creating a doorway or a gateway, a gateway computers, and uh, creating a doorway in order for a demon to come out of. That's the purpose of what they call sacred geometry. 
Yes, sir. There's a lot of bands that hire satanic priests to pray over their music so when their music is played, demons are released into the people that listen to it. Absolutely. And they have them at their concert. And if you look above the stage, there's usually a guy up there praying over the people in the concert. Very, very, very well uh, said. Very well said. Uh, a friend of mine um, who was Eminem's mentor, a guy named Proof, he lost his life in reality because he brought that information to the small, intimate hip hop community in Detroit and was spreading that knowledge around. It blew his mind, so he had to tell somebody. Well, it got back to them that he told, and he was set up and killed. And that's how Proof really lost his life. But Proof told us that, that they went into the meeting on the 13th floor, yeah. which did not exist on the elevator pad. Coincidence. Well, coincidence, okay. On the pad, it went from 12 to 14, but they, the manager who took them up the elevator to the meeting, to this secret meeting, used the key and turned it after they passed the 12th floor and they stopped at a floor. There is a floor between 12 and 14, especially in big old archaic buildings. And they went off down the hallway, went into a room with a big conference room table. And in the center of the table was their master tape at the time. They were still using master tapes back then, a, a, a two inch reel. And it was sitting, sitting in the center of one of those pentagrams, one of those symbols. And there was a candle on each point of the pentagram. And Proof and the guys from D12 was told, uh, this is minister such and such. He's prayed over so many great artist tapes, and he wants to pray over you guys' stuff. He's going to help you. Every time he prays over somebody's tapes, their sales go up 80 90%. And Proof freaked out, and he left, left the meeting. He was going to come back home to Detroit and leave the whole thing alone. But he didn't. He, he decided to go back. And, um, you know, he lost his life because of that decision. But he still somewhat is considered a martyr to a lot of us in the community because he did let that out. He gave us confirmation that that's really something that they really does go on. But... Um, Okay, we've got about eight minutes. Um, just a couple more things, and then, uh, then we're going to stop for some questions. Okay, let's look at this. Most music is made by inspiration. Inspiration from what? Well, in the word inspire, you have the root. Spire. Which is where you get <clears throat> spirit from. So you have inspire, a spirit in you. Inspire. You have aspire, which means I have a spirit to do something. I aspire to be a great teacher. And then when the spirit leaves you, expire. Mm -hmm. And of course we know X can represent, X is the unknown and it can represent a, a Z sound or an S sound. Z and S are the same. Even in scripture, you find, and just look at them, look at them. Make a lazy Z and make a strict S. It's the same letters forward and backward. But even in scripture, you find the wilderness of sin spelled both with an S and with a Z in the Old Testament. Okay, now, some of the letters. One of the things that makes English so hard to, to learn is the letter trickery. You have false letters and you have original letters, letters that go all the way back to ancient times and then you have newer contrived letters, okay? Uh, letters that are really Masonic symbols, like the C. The C is a false letter because the C stands for cipher. Cipher means a circle. And a C is nothing but half a circle. B is nothing but 13, with the, no space between the 1 and the 3. Okay, B really would be a, a P, uh, produces much of the same, the same sound. Now, going back to ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet, and ancient Hebrew, you don't find all of these extra letters, nor do you find all your, your, your vowels. There was one vowel. 
And that vowel, the original vowel, is the first vowel. And the first is the A. When I was a kid, my mom got me a dictionary, a Macmillan's dictionary, and for every letter, it showed you the progression of the letter through time. Mm -hmm. And most all of the letters were either upside down or backward before. So really, we're now they're really upside down and backward today. We read backward today. The other cultures of the world do everything from right to left. You start with the right. You do the right thing first. The right. You lead with your right foot. You shake with your right hand. You look people in the right eye. You've got two eyes, only one focus. You can't look somebody in two eyes at the same time. You see the other eye out of your periphery but you're focusing on one eye. You're looking for the right eye or the correct self. Right, correct eye, self. Somebody understood these things. But A was the first, and even in the uh, forbidden practice of astrology, the first sign is Aries, which begins with A, and it happens to symbolize the ram, and so did the A. The A was a symbol of a ram. So when you first stick vowels in between the tetragrammaton to cause the consonants to connect the, the vowel that, should, that was stuck in there in ancient Hebrew was A. And ironically, we are at Beit Ahava, which when you stake the Y, which is the question, the eternal question that a child can ask a million times, why, why, why? When you stick the Y in front of love, you get this. The name of the true and living I am that I am eternal. Yahweh. Right. So we're we're at the top of the hour and um, just got a couple of minutes. So if there's any questions. I have a question. Yes, sir. Okay, this is all good. Now how can we put this into practice in our everyday life? What what can we do that is this is gonna change our environment and change our community and change our lives? Okay. We can we can no longer afford to be ignorant of the evidence of the enemy around us. Instead of thinking that simply by abstaining from the obvious sins uh, that that makes you cover, you should realize that there is a ongoing spell. Even when we're writing and when we're speaking, we should take more care when we're speaking one to another. We should take more care in paying attention to the signs and symbols that are all around us, the things that we intake, the things we put on our body. We should look at the signs and symbols that are all around us. And we should no longer assume that it's all good. We should now be able to have an eye for seeing, or at least for questioning. Let's at least ask the questions. Ask, ask questions. Well, what's the origin of that? Where did that come from? Our people perish for lack of knowledge. Amazing. So at the at, on the most basic level, like when we was at the grocery store, just walking around the grocery store pointing at the different logos, the word, looking at different things. And it might make you think twice about giving money to that company or corporation, or even more so ingesting their product into your body. Our people perish, meaning get <coughs> sick, go crazy, die, get fat, because of our lack of understanding the way that the enemy works in the most subtle, as we're told in Genesis, he's subtle. That means he's slick. That's right. So if we change our thinking from being very shallow to being wise as serpents, then that may prolong your life. That may make you look twice at a product that you've been using for so long and you wonder, why does my skin always break out when I do such a thing? Maybe now you can look at the corporations that run the world around you and not, put, uh, not believe their report over the report of the Lord. Mm. Mm -hmm. Think of the things we put on our bodies. We use shampoo on our heads, which is what houses our brains. And so much of society is going crazy and we're all just going forward, using the products, ignoring the logos on the products, in a state of ignorance, which is another one of the words like coincidence. We say a person is ignorant because they don't know. No, 
To ignore me, you have to see me and know I'm here. So we are ignorant about the signs and symbols around us. So therefore, the devil is able to sneak into our lives unsuspecting. That answer that? Sure. What, you know, what about the Procter Gamble? Don't they have something with like the moving stars and all that? Yeah, well, well they, they've adjusted their logo, but they once had, had a, a logo yeah, yeah. of a man uh, who, who was to represent their God. Their God is Lucifer, not mine. But who was blowing a, blowing a, uh, a smoke, a spell, and in his beard was triple six. And that, that came out and that made big news and even the, they said that the president of Procter & Gamble came on the Donahue show and now you cannot find it, but they had said that he came out and said that, well, yeah, we, we, we are great contributors to the church of Satan. And Procter & Gamble makes a, a huge variety of products Oops. that we use every day. Oops. Things you put on babies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if the enemy's goal is to kill, steal, and destroy, then, yeah, we need to look twice at the different things we put on our bodies, that we intake into our bodies, that we feed our children. Walt Disney was a huge member of this society that comes up with these things. And how many of us stick our children and grandchildren in front of the TV and let him indoctrinate them into witchcraft? Look at the uh, cartoon Fantasia, if there's anybody who questions that. The end of Fantasia should seal the deal for you that Walt Disney was into the occult. Any more? Think about, oh, I'm sorry, Ann. Go ahead. I was just saying, think about the uh, the symbol for the medical profession, a pole with two snakes on yeah. it. Absolutely. That's what I was just headed at. Oh, I'm Absolutely. sorry. Um, you know, some people have something really wrong with them that they need medicine. Yes. But nowadays, I think the oath they took in the old days to really try to make somebody well, like people who get cancer. But nowadays, if you're not on a pill, oh my goodness, what do you mean you don't take any pills? The only pill you need is the gospel pill. And, <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> and the pills that they give you create something else. They give you this stuff for Absolutely. acid reflux, and I know this because my daughter has acid reflux. She had to go to the hospital and get polyps taken out that the acid reflux medicine gave her. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, see, any dope man, mm. and that's what we're talking about, pharmacon. Pharmacy. You used to get your medicine from the farm. Now you get your medicine from the big pharma. Right. Same root word. F is F is P H, P -H is F. Okay? So Pharmacon was the name of one of the fallen ones, also called Hermes. And when doctors take their oath, and Jesus said, take no oath. When doctors take their oath, they take their oath to a false deity named Hermes. Now that does not mean that the Lord does not give some people the gift of, 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 uh, 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 of medicine and of understanding how to help people. Up. But that's the minority of cases. The majority of cases, just like the dope men in the streets of any ghetto, their job is to give you some of this dope so that you have to keep coming back and giving them some money. Mm -hmm. Well, doctors do that too. They put you on Absolutely. top of cocaine. Absolutely. 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 And that's that's the drug game. Yes. Absolutely. Have you ever done any study on the Monsanto company? Monsanto. Yes. Yes. Company? Mon Mon Have you found Monsanto. anything out about that? Yes. I mean, Mon they own all this. Mon they own Monsanto's. Monsanto. Every they're every they're every, every aspect. Again, like we said in the very beginning, so it's sports, it's finances, it is the companies that are behind the farms the now who give the seeds out. Yeah, Monsanto's has taken control, their job is to take control of our food. Mm -hmm. Now that they modify the seeds. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Absolutely. 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 So what do you do? You do all you can <coughs> with the knowledge that you have. No one, now this has to be said. What are you going to do? You're going to stop speaking English? <laughs> okay. So but, but, but the power in a spell is in your, your ignorance of it. People say, oh, well, voodoo only works if you believe in it. I can tell you that's a lie. Voodoo works by you not knowing that I'm putting a spell on you. If you have a, 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 some cognition that a spell is afoot, you'll be able to avoid it. 
It's the same thing with this. We're talking about secret societies that worship Lucifer. And Lucifer's religion is not Islam. It's magic. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. So where did you get all your information and how, like a guy like me, go about finding it? Okay. So I could chase it down myself. Okay. Uh, most everything that, most of what I said, if you do some etymological, the, the study of words is etymology. So if you look up the etymology. Oh, that's a cow. Okay. It's cool. All right. It's a mouthful, is it? Etymology is the study of the origin of words. That will bring you a lot of what I said, but I'm just going to tell you. Uh, you know, I've got 20 some years of research and have come across a lot of books by the most highs with. Things I'm not supposed to have read. My, <laughs> bless you. Bless you. My, my grandparents who were involved in the secret society, finding their books, uh, running across people who were involved in the society who would inadvertently tell me things, being involved in the music business where I found out a lot of things and studying the occult. So it was a culmination of things that gave me this body of knowledge. But in general, if you want to learn some things about word origin, that's the key, etymology, okay, which will, which will take you, you know, some, some distance. And they are walking amongst Absolutely. I had a gal I really believed in. She gave me really wonderful massages. Mm-hmm. And one, oh yeah, one mm-hmm. time I'm there and I don't feel anything. And so I open my eyes and she has a magic wand. <gasps> wow. I could not wait to get my clothes on and leave. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, when I went to pay her, she said, I have to go back to Earth. You stole everything from me. Oh my! Wow! And I'm like, <laughs> and two weeks later, she called and invited Bob and I to a Halloween party. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure we stole yeah, everything. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you have to. I mean, <coughs> who'd have thought? Absolutely. A licensed yes. massage yep. person yes. and a reputable. Yep. Absolutely. And and then one 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 other big thing here too. You know. In order to to uh, be a proper prayer warrior, as I know many of you are, you need to know what to pray against. If you don't even know that this is a particular weapon or the secret societies are a thing, are an instrument, I mean really the instrument of Lucifer's will on the planet comes through secret societies, then you know, you're, you're not going to even uh, be able to be effective in that area of warfare. So knowing that that's 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 really the end, you know. And again, the people that are involved are duped, okay, by and large. I mean, the worshipful master in the thirty-third degree and up, they know what they're doing. But by and large, we're talking about people that are deceived. They need to be prayed for, you know. Every time you pass by a Masonic lodge, you should say a prayer. I do every you time know. I'm here. Yeah. You know, and, and for those of us who have had ancestry involved in that, that's yeah, something. I, that's I, a bond I, that you need to break. You need to be able to pray against that. We lost that. Amen. Yes. Um, have you ever heard of the band Skillet before? Yeah, I've heard of it. Okay. Well, someone told me that um, they used to practice witchcraft. They don't anymore, but um, they're Christian now, supposedly. But they said that um, Skillet was. They went to a Skillet concert, and Skillet was like a more of a an evil demonic band um, that they said that they could see them like almost casting a spell on the people at the concert. Is Skillet a okay band or not? Well, this is the general rule. <laughs> what? I mean, I've never heard that before from anybody else, so that's why. Okay. Well, well, the general rule is what level of platform does Skillet have? Um, are they big? If they're big, then the answer is usually it's going to have to be yes. Because otherwise, how do you get on the airwaves? Ephesians 2 and 2, the devil is the prince of the power of the air. So if you're getting played 10 times a day, it's no question. I mean, like Toby Mac is on the air all the time. He's on all the stations. Is 
Well, well, well. Let, let me let me just interject <laughs> this, and this this would be like, this would be like the Girl Scouts for you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Lucifer, he he's not he's not the dullest knife in the drawer. He understands the need for uh, controlled opposition, so he will create bands in the Christian realm. There, there are a great many of them. I, I recently had someone send me a message uh, who came from out of that world, from out of the Christian rock world, and was telling me some mind-blowing thing that raised up my hair, and I don't have none. <laughs> <laughs> but it's everywhere. It's everywhere where things are popularized. Pop culture. Who's the pop or the culture? Pop culture. And that's, that's the key. Pop culture. How popular is it? Remember, now, Jesus and his disciples were not popular. Okay? Uh, the love, uh, 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 for those who have, because you love the world, you have not the love of the Father in you. To be popular, we're talking about lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. <coughs> we're talking about you getting stellar music awards. If you're getting stellar music awards, I mean, it's just, it's the way that the system is set up. God is not into exalting man. He says he is not a respecter of persons. So the people that get exalted and put up high in society, the, the championship ring, win, uh, uh, ring winners, the people that get played in rotation the most, the people who have the most posters out, the people who, whose videos get played the most, these are the people we're talking about. And he don't just have those who look obviously bad. Yes. Anna, um, a couple of things. One is the word says that uh, Hasatan, Satan, will disguise himself as a minister of light and he will sit in the midst of the congregation. I, I live by two rules. When in doubt, don't. And I believe that God instilled in each one of us a barometer. I call it a shalom meter. And when we're walking into a path, if you have peace of passes, I'll understand you know you're walking in the path that you're supposed to be walking in. But if you start down a path and there's just a check in your spirit, don't go down that path. That's that barometer that God's put in you. Absolutely. And it's that still small voice people will call it. I call it the shalom meter. So be led by the spirit and you'll never go wrong. If you have a check, then don't do it. Because even though somebody says, we're Christians, right. Satan will disguise himself Absolutely. as a minister of life. Absolutely. Jeremiah 33 and 3. Um, and uh, test the spirit by the spirit. The Holy Spirit will reveal all things unto you. But again, when Jesus says, be wise as serpents, that's the equivalent of, don't be goofy, be kind of slick. Mm -hmm. That means that everything that comes your way that doesn't look like it's <coughs> bad should still be checked. My grandma used to say, everything look good ain't good. That's right. That's right. Everything that <coughs> glitters is not gold. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just because it's not the cookie jar don't mean it's a cookie. Right. <laughs> well said. Amen. So, Amen. I, what about the Nike? The swoosh of the word Nike. Absolutely, oh, Nike is a goddess of uh, of victory. It's the equivalent of the goddess Victoria, and the the swoosh is a sickle. It's the same thing that you find on the Newport box, and it's used to cut down the enemy. And, you know, uh, Darian sitting over there. Oh, yeah. I know that one. <laughs> That's the symbol for the monster enemy, uh, en en energy drink. <laughs> <laughs> and those are Bob's in Hebrew. That's right. And each bob is the, represents the number six. Absolutely. So it's six, six, six. Uh, and their logo is unleash the beast that's within right. you. That's uh, right. The beast with oh, the, that's yeah. within you. Absolutely. So exactly. again, just to, to understand, you know, that. Maybe that's why I don't drink monster. <laughs> <laughs> look, at, look at how popular energy drinks have become. Your yes. energy drink is called water. <laughs> but it, again, the devil takes advantage of our laziness too. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of drinking the proper juices or water, you believe that you can get some energy out of a can. That's naive. That's Avion for you. Yeah. 
You know, I used to sell chemicals for 20 years legally. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I did a lot of research in the chemical industry, and they say that Lysol disinfectant spray is 500,000 times more deadly than DDT. Um, and yet we have cannabis sitting at the changing table. Yeah. Don't get started on chlorine. That's for sure. The bleach, yeah, the chlorine bleach, oh. the chlorine dioxide, they're hugely terrible for your respiratory system. I haven't used bleach system. in 25 years, guys. And there is no, actually, there is no surfactants in bleach, so I mean, and, and I could really just go off on that, but we won't go. Make us a list for next week. Mm -hmm. right. I spend way too much time in chlorine. Um, um, Theo, were, were, you, were you done with everything? Yes. I got something I was thinking about when we were talking about music before. You know, it talks about how um, Lucifer, when he was in heaven, he lit up with sound. He changed colors. And then when I thought about how artists, what do they do on stage? Lighting. Mm -hmm. All the different colors that are shifting and changing wow, as that. they play music. I, I, that blew my mind when I, when I correlated the two. Like, oh, wow. I mean, it's, it's everywhere. You know, it says uh, that no sorcerer, no sorcerer will enter the kingdom of heaven. But if you, and we could say, well, we don't see very many wizards around today, you know, sorcerers. But actually, if you look in the, in the Greek, it is uh, pharmaceutica, and so the ones that you know, practice the pharmacy, um, it's it's just man's attempt at being God and healing themselves instead right. of going to the one that heals us. I say the reason we don't have very many miracles in the United States today is because. We have Visa and MasterCard. We don't have to wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's the right. Third world countries, they have to wait on the Lord. Right. They have no choice. Were you done with your teaching? Or, I mean, uh, the reason I ask is if you're not, we can bring you back next week. Well, I mean, I've got I've got much more. I'm going to ask everybody, if did folks you enjoy Theo? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. If he, if he wants to come back. Because I, if, if we enjoy this type of format, and I do, because there's so many gifts within this room. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I want Bob and Larry to come in and do healing teachings. I want uh, Reverend Hay to come in and, and do uh, teachings on, on prayer. And there's this, uh, the Chet Nader, um, he's, he's, he's very gifted and we want him to do some teachings. Uh, so, you know, and, and I just want, because it says in the word, when you come together, what do you bring your gift? That's right. And we share our gift with each other. I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. This is not the John show. This is God's show. And I never invite him in and say, you sit over here and we'll show you what we're going to do. But we ask him to, to, to wow us, and he, and he does all the time. Amen. So if you've enjoyed um, Theo, and, and if you're not done, we can bring you back next week. Uh, I'd love How many to. How would like to? Yeah. 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 But let's show Theo our love. Do it. Um, we're going to take up an offering for Theo. He does this out of his heart, out of his kindness. And this is Veda Hava. Love is a verb, it's not a noun. You know, so uh, we, we show people our love by, by blessing them. Bless means to kneel as you present your gifts when you bless somebody. Um, so, with all that said, um, yeah, because, like I said, I'm, I'm excited about what God is bringing into the house. You know, I'm excited about Reverend Kay coming in. I'm excited, you know, about uh, Larry and Bob and, and all the good things. And, and, and I'm not trying to, to miss anybody. You know, my wife is very gifted in, in, in a lot of things. And I'd love for her to teach the dance, you know, because it's commanded unto the men to dance for the Lord. No hey, <laughs> Where's that at? <laughs> Where's that at? Yeah. It's in, it's in the book of Psalms. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's commanded unto the men to dance for the Lord. And, there, and we could go off into a teaching about dancing. Well, you, you might have to. Come now. <laughs> How about this? It yes, says the God that's, dances that's around us. Thing thing. You were, I, I caught that video yes. where you were talking about, about Hagee being yes, he's been part of the him. opposition. Yeah. And I'm thinking, huh? What? Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, I've seen something that I caught. And it, yeah. I did, and it, just, it really it disturbed me a lot. And it's just like, and then I've seen a few other things, and it's just like, 
So yes. this, this guy, he's His got, he's got to messianic be. teachings in here, Hebrew and stuff. Yeah, but you know, in here. Yeah, he, yeah, but you well, know who he got that from? Do you know who he got it from? He got it from Mark Bill. He, and you know what? He went on the TV and he did that's not. That's right. That's what I got right here. Yeah, Mark <laughs> Bilt is all right, but that um, that Hagee, he he didn't give him any of the credit. And I know when he went, I was going to Hagee. I always had a check in my spirit when I gave him. I was going to sing to you the Rony Blessing over us. Me too. As, and as and I'm going to tell you why I'm going to sing the Rony Blessing over us. Because Adonai said to Moshe. He said, speak to Aaron and his sons, and you tell them that this is how you are to bless the people. You're safe to say to them. And then he said, in this way, they are to put my name on the people so that I will bless them. The power of our words. Why do I sing it? Because I believe that God brought the worlds into existence by singing. Yevarecha cha Adonai vayish barecha Yeh Adonai pene velecha Vihu necha Yisa Adonai pene velecha Vyusem lecha Shalom And I will speak from the ancient Hebrew perspective Yahweh will kneel before you and he will present his gifts. Yes, Lord. And he will guard you with a hedge of protection. Yahweh will keep his wholeness of being. He will cause his wholeness of being to shine upon you, toward you bringing order. And he will provide you with love. He will provide you with sustenance. And Yahweh will lift up his wholeness of being and he's going to look upon you and he will set in place all that you need to be whole and complete. And all of God's children said, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God by Yahweh. You don't have to leave. There's coffee, there's donuts, there's cookies that are lovely. Oh, I have an announcement.